So yeah, I was bored. I thought, what can I do to the RV? So I thought of a project. I've been wanting to do this for a while, so I finally figured now's the time to do it. Seeing it's like 2.30 in the morning and it's a rainy night, nothing else to do. Here is my problem. Let me step out here where you can see a little bit more. Okay, so here's a front porch light. There's a front door, of course. And a lot of times we're out camping, I found as we're out running around and we, we know it's, we're going to be coming back after dark, but we'll leave that light on, which is fine because when you get back in, you can see the, there's the steps, you can see the steps to get back in the RV. But the problem with that is you usually have a truckload of bugs swarming all around that light, just waiting to get in the RV. As soon as you open up the door, they swarm in. So I had the idea of mounting another light. I want to put it down here, probably just past that, just past the window, uh, between the W and the window in, in that area. They make them large round ones. I think they call them scare lights, which out a good light. So by mounting a light there, it will give me enough light to still light up my steps so I can get in safely, but not have all the bug issues. And I've already added another light up front because another problem I found is with this porch light, when you open up this slide, this, this whole area here, this whole room opens up. When you open that up, it blocks all the light. So when you pull up to your RV at night, you, you can't see because the slide is opened up about three foot and it blocks all that light completely. So it's real dark getting around. So last year I added that light right there. I don't have it on at the moment, but I did. I added there that light. So that comes in handy when we pull up to the RV and need to see to get around the corner. So now I'm going to show you a little bit of how I've decided to route my wiring because that's always an issue of an RV that's already been built. And let me show you what I've done. Okay, back inside. So here's where our normal, our normal switches are for the uh, porch light, the, the inside lights for the RV, and that's the step light or the step switch. So I wanted it in this area, but I also wanted it a, a different type of switch. I wanted one that would light up for me. This one has an, a bright LED in it, and it's a 30 amp switch. Amazing, you can get like five of these for 10 bucks or something like that on Amazon. But another little issue I had is this wall is very shallow, not much space in there. So I put this, I put a couple of O-rings in there to space it out slightly and amounted it to, actually this is a uh, wall plate for coax cable, TV cable. I just took the coax cable connector out of it, drilled out the hole, put this on here and I bit my terminals so they'll have plenty of clearance. And so it's going to go right in here. So that'll look pretty nice. And then when it's on at night, we're going to bed, I'll notice that bright blue light staring at me and that'll remind me to, to, to turn it off and in case we're boondocking and I'm not running my batteries dead. So in the, then I had to get my strategy of how I'm going to get this wire all the way back to the back bedroom. And the way I've figured this out, this is a real handy stuff. This here, this is the tubing like you run your, um, run your water lines to your uh, uh, refrigerator, ice maker. That's what I'm starting to say, ice maker. Real handy for, for running wires like this. So I took this out here and ran it up. But now in order to get there, got a little, little tricky. But, uh, I took the speaker out here from the stereo. And by doing that, I was able to get up inside there because there's just a real small little channel, very small channel that you can run those wires up through. Um, because you got a um, because you got a board running along this way, but they just got a little bit notch, so I was able to get, get that up through there. And then I took this out, and then from here, you can see back in there. That's where my wires are going to come down. And then we're going to go run underneath the fridge, alongside here. Okay, then we're going to head to the bathroom. bathroom and I've taken this little piece here it was just kind of a it's actually just caulked in place had a few staples in it wasn't no problem getting out really so I'll um, run my wire 
all, all through here I'll get some roll backs to run it through to protect it. So then I can get it and run it in behind the washer and dryer. Pretty easy. And then here's the washer and dryer. Then I'll run it along the back wall at the very bottom. Come up the back side into the closet. And then I'll drill me a hole. I've already got some wires running up here going for, for speakers. And I've got them behind this uh, piece of edging to protect them. So I'll drill me a hole right here. And, and uh, that's my plan anyway. Shouldn't be too too difficult. So I'm gonna start running some wires. See how far I'm I get. I'm gonna show you how sweet this tubing is for running running wire. Get the kick in here, and I just I just pull it down, and it just pulls that wire right on through the wall. A whole lot better than using that steel fish tape. That would be a, that would have been a real pain. So okay, so now I've got my wire coming out the bottom. So that worked out really easy. So if you ever need to run some wire, use some of this uh, ice maker water line. It's really, really good for that. Well, I'm on my way, heading down the, and through the bathroom now, through the plumbing. But I was going to make this comment, and if you're ever doing kind of wiring in your RV, just like the, the factory, when they run wires from the factory, they always put everything in Romex. Of course, that's what I'm doing here. Because you think about these things are going down the road, they're twisting and turning, vibrating, everything's shaking around. And you sh just don't want to throw a wire up in here just to have the pipes rub it, rub it into, have a short, have a fire. Something bad could happen, so protect your wires. So I've got my cool light in today, stainless steel, and I've done put in one of those, um, you can see it there, one of those LED bulbs in it. This is what came out of it. So that, that, those are a much brighter uh, light. And uh, somewhere here there's a gasket, but I wasn't too fond of it. <laughs> here it is. I'm not too fond of this little gasket, so I'll probably put butyl tape around here. Got me some stainless steel screws to screw that on with so there'll be no rust. And got that. And then I got my switch all wired up, ready to go. Got my wires in here. Got my ground wire. And so I got it. So it gives me a little light when it's on. I'll have a nice blue LED, and that'll remind me that it's on at nighttime when we're boondocking and fixing to go to bed. I'll that'll catch my eye, and I'll remember to shut it off and not leave it on all night, pulling my batteries down. And so this evening, I'll, when it gets dark, I'll start hanging my light, do a little test run, make sure it produces enough light and puts it where I need it. And then I'll screw it to the RV and see how it works. So it's warmed up today and I'm putting the final touches on my light. And on the reviews on, a, on Amazon where I bought the light, some people talked about this flimsy little gasket was not holding up. So, and I surely don't want no water getting in my RV. So I've put a layer of butyl tape, this stuff right here, picked up at the local mobile home place and run that all the way around. So I'm going to go up there and put that back on and finish hooking up my wires and just we can have this all finished up and go on to the next project. Okay, showing you how my light turned out. I got my light on up here, got it wired up, nice and bright, and it casts just enough light to light up my steps. Over here, you can't tell, us this cell phone really don't pick up the light too well. But so now, instead of when we leave, we always leave that front that porch light on. So when we get in, if it's if the moon's not out, it's really dark. Coming trying to find these stairs and to get in there uh, in the RV safely. So now I can leave this that light off. Get in here, turn it off. There we go. So now we can leave that light off. You can still see the steps and leave that light on. And so all the bugs can swarm around that light. And they won't be getting inside the RV. So it's worked out pretty well. Been wanting to do that for quite a long time. Now I got so actually I've when the RV was built it only had the one light. And I also added a light up here you can see. So because when you when this when this living room slide is opened up, it comes out about two foot. When it's opened up, it blocks it blocks the uh, porch light completely from the, the nose of the RV. When you're parking up front, you can't see a thing coming around that corner. 
So, uh, another RV mod, wrapping it up. The light is mounted, and if you zoom in, you can see the butyl tape all the way around the edge. So that should keep out any water. Dry. And now we'll go test it. Okay, I just made my last connection. Everything's finished. And you see my little light switch here. The little light comes on. Can you see it? Let's get it focused on it. Can you see it even? There you go. See it come on and off. That works. And to recap, how I ran the wires, I'd run it down through the wall, down underneath the fridge, down along back the, the, the closet here, and then we went on the plumbing track behind the washing machine. It's dark back here. Behind the washing machine, behind that closet, come up through all these drawers on the back side. And now, because I got all the wires all protected so nothing could get rubbed or touched, it goes up in that little track. Then you, the light is like right here, and I run it in behind this track so the wires will never get touched or rubbed or, or damaged in any way. So, all that one is done. I just gotta clean up my mess and go on to my next job.